the long-awaited Zeiss ZX-1 is available for pre-order. I got something in the post today. The Canon RF 300mm f2.8 is coming with the Canon R1. And what's Pentax up to? Are they still stuck in the 1960s? Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Simon. Thanks for tuning into The Ordinary Filmmaker. If you're new here, subscribe to get notification of new videos like this one so you don't miss any news, rumors, or tutorials. And don't forget, I'm giving away a brand new Canon EOS R5 full-frame mirrorless camera to one lucky viewer. Details are in the description down below, or you can watch this video here, but essentially, all you have to do is subscribe. When I reported on Panasonic's relegation to the other category in worldwide sales, it got me thinking about Pentex and their vision, and their plans to get promoted out of the basement. We hadn't heard much of them in recent years, or at least so it seemed. I couldn't find their vision, which is a little strange, don't you think? But I did find this in big, bold letters to start off their webpage. Pentex believes in the future of SLR photography. Sounds like something we'd hear back in the 1960s when SLR technology took off. Sure, the first patent was granted in 1861, but it did take a little bit of time for the technology to gain widespread use. And that's where Pentex's opening statement takes me, back to the 1960s. Now, they could have used the popular term DSLR, but they chose SLR, sending us back in time before microprocessors changed the world. But I love going down memory lane, so I kept reading. When you take a picture with a single lens reflex camera, the light passes through the lens, and in turn, the optical viewfinder. You view the image directly with your eyes and feel it with your heart. This is the unique experience you get when using an SLR. Not only do you enjoy the images captured, but also the entire process of taking a picture from deciding on what to capture and where, to observing the scene, composing the image, and then finally, releasing the shutter. Yep, I'm back in the 1960s, and I'm not making this up. These are their words, content, word for word, right from their website. They're taking us back in time before digital cameras, back to the good old days, the golden age of photography, long before those nasty digital cameras arrived and long before video became mainstream as a creative tool. Not realizing that mirrorless cameras can also capture light and touch the soul, triggering memories. Pentex is committed to the future of SLR photography through the continued development of camera technology. So why take your customers back to the 1960s? Now, was Pentex the market leader? And is Pentex about to take charge again? Nope. There's no mention of past successes. No goals they want to achieve or any measurable objectives stated. It's like something that Mr. Miyagi would say in The Karate Kid to Daniel LaRussa, leaving him completely confused. But unlike Mr. Miyagi, I don't get the feeling there's a strategic plan to lift Pentex from the basement of obscurity to the top of the leaderboard. Confused? Yeah, me too. I've stated many times that DSLRs still have a future and will for some time to come. They offer advantages over mirrorless cameras, but the tide has clearly turned. All leading camera manufacturers and followers have committed all future development to mirrorless platforms. Is Pentex seeing perhaps something others don't? Perhaps Pentex is having a stroke of genius, being the only manufacturer to stick with DSLR technologies, to keep developing it as an alternative to mirrorless. But if so, there's no sense of this in their confusing message. Their message feels, well, slapped together, trying to conjure up memories of long forgotten time when things were simple. But things were never really that simple in the past. We just choose to remember the good times. Those that lived through the 60s, 70s, and 80s Knows that, know that we had some challenging times to say the least, but appeal to our emotions, try they do. By focusing on the senses of the photographer, these lenses have the ability to express distinct memories and feelings, drawing on natural details to create a sense of quality and real perspective. I don't normally read off so many quotes, but I want you to see that I'm not pulling quotes out of context. I want you to see that their overall vision isn't, well, a vision at all, but to keep focusing on their current DSLR technology and lenses in an attempt to drum up sales on existing stock without the costly need to develop new products. If we fall in love with the SLR technology of old, Pentex is the company for us. That's essentially what they're saying. Come to Pentex if you want technology patented in 1861 and made popular in the 1960s. Can was late to the mirrorless markets and stated so in their 2019 fiscal year-end statements. But even Canon, 
the current market leader understands the future of camera technology is in the mirrorless platforms. They also understand that developing good video capabilities in a stills hybrid camera is essential to its success, as does every other camera manufacturer. So what's really going on? Well, Pentex is cash strapped and Ricoh has cut off their allowance. They don't have enough revenue to develop new technologies or even cameras and haven't for many years. This is their Hail Mary to avoid irrelevancy, an attempt to convince us to fall in love with retro cameras and retro is big right now. And to convince us to buy a Pentex as they're the only option in town. Sadly, I don't see Pentex recovering. They're too far gone. But maybe I'm being too harsh. What do you think? Am I being too harsh? Did they just hire the wrong media communications company? And if so, why haven't they changed their message? It's been up there since July. Let me know in the comments section down below what you think. And now, let's see what Zeiss is up to with the ZX-1. Does it ring a bell? Well, Zeiss made an announcement back in 2018 that they were developing an Android-based interchangeable lens camera. Sorry, what? No, six... $6,000 and it's a fixed built-in lens. Okay, well, it's ready for pre-order, um, but that is a lot of money for a stills hybrid camera with a fixed lens. Now, if you are interested in this camera, you might want to hold off on the pre-order. Keep in mind that there's no release date and we did have to wait two years from the announcement just to get the pre-order and specs. So what do you get for six grand? Well, it does have a 37.4 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor is capable of 4K up to 30 frames per second and has an ISO range of 80 to 51,200. It comes with a built-in Zeiss Distagon T35mm f2 lens. Zeiss says it's designed to provide edge-to-edge -edge sharpness and illumination. Spherical aberration and distortion is minimized with two aspherical elements. It has a leaf shutter and provides manual control over aperture. Oh, and this is a big one. The storage? It's integrated into the camera. That's a first for a camera, integrated lens and storage. Looks like they're borrowing from Apple and integrating everything, including the things that we don't want integrated. Now granted, the storage is 512 gigabytes, but I shoot a lot of video and want to be able to switch out cards for different shoots. And what if the storage goes bad? Yep, send it in for service. But what do you think? Is this the type of camera for you? Okay, look, I get that this is a high quality stills camera first, second and third, but integrated lens and storage? Well, it better be weather sealed to IP68. And it's not. And there goes that. At six grand, with integrated storage and lens, they missed an opportunity to engineer a more aggressive weather sealed unit. My iPhone 11 can easily provide IP68. Now, while the camera is water resistant to some degree, it's not much and it isn't even dust proof. But if you're looking for something a little more affordable, you might be interested in the Canon RF 300mm f2.8 L series image stabilized USM lens. The 300mm was first rumored back in June 2019. It's good to see it's finally going to make the light of day some two years after first being rumored. It gives you an idea of how long it can take or how long we have to wait once a lens is rumored to it actually coming out, if at all. So when will we see it? Well, it's due to be released alongside the Canon R1 in 2021. And as far as credibility goes, the rumor is rated as CR2, which means it comes from known sources and is considered reliable. Oh, here's one last look at the 20 some RF lenses that have been rumored since 2019. Let's hope we see a few more of these knocked off the list and into store shelves soon. Since I bought the Canon EOS R5, I've been making heavy use of the pro-grade Cobalt 325GB CF Express card. It saves me a good eight hours a week transferring files off the R5, more if I make more mistakes. And it's way quicker than those V90 UHS-2 cards. But I've run into some problems. The card's only 325 gigabytes, and formatted, I'm left with 300 gigabytes. I could have bought a larger size card or even multiple cards, but at $550 for each card, that wasn't an option on my budget. Moreover, I have to format the card every project or after every project to ensure that I have enough space for the next project. And therein lies the second problem. I accidentally recorded over much needed content at least four different times, and it really hurts. I didn't really suspect that I'd be recording as much 4K video when I was looking at buying the camera, and I didn't expect I'd be recording C-Log as much. The R5 is pushing my capabilities, and I'm using more of its capabilities. 
in hindsight, I should have gone with a slightly slower CF Express card to have more storage. I even filled up the card recording a Q&A video once. I reached out to SanDisk, ProGrade, and Angelbird for larger capacity cards to review alongside the Canon EOS R5. I thought it would be a really good review. Angelbird was quick to respond and said that they'd ship me out a card and a card reader for review. Sadly, I didn't hear back from SanDisk or ProGrade. As such, I'll be doing a full review of the Angelbird, but compare it to the ProGrade in different scenarios. But for now, let's see what they sent me in the box. That's what this is here, if you were wondering. Now, it's a little bit dented on the sides, but everything inside looks really good. So here's the card reader. It's a pretty decent sized box. I wonder if there's anything else inside there. But I know what you guys want to get into. You want to actually see what card they sent me. Well, before I go on to that, this, if you're looking for a card reader for Angelbird, it's $64.90. It's uh, USB-C, and it's compatible with Thunderbolt 3, so there's that. All right, what else do we have in here? A pen. Oh, one of these four-color pens. I like these. Um, my son's in school. He's in grade one right now, so I'm usually digital. So to actually have a decent pen on handy, that's excellent as well. I know, I'm delaying, right? So here we go. What card do we have? You're not going to believe this. Two terabytes. Let's open it up. Let's take a look here. Let's see what the packaging is like. If I can get it out with my fingers. There's a serial number. That must be for recovering data. This is very Apple-esque, the way everything is so neatly packaged. So we got some decals here. We got a sticker. And here we go. There it is there. Two terabytes. It still amazes me how much storage can be crammed into such a small space. And to think they're about to release a four terabyte CF Express card. Now this two terabyte CF Express card retails for $899 US on B&H. But that's $100 lower than the Delkin 2TB CF Express card. It provides storage capabilities needed for traveling scenarios or for longer projects, or for those scenarios where an external recorder like the Ninja 5 just are too bulky and don't really work out. And, more importantly to me, it reduces the risk that I'll be overriding content anytime soon. And to be fully transparent with you, Angelbird has not told me what to say, and I'm free to keep the card after the review. But that's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe for your chance to win the Cinco Lav S6E and M3 shotgun microphones. I'll be awarding those prizes once the channel reaches 20,000 subscribers. And I'll offer up a different, more expensive prize every 10,000 subscribers until I reach 100,000. Once I reach that level, I'll be awarding a Canon EOS R5 brand new full frame mirrorless camera. And on that bombshell, thanks for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. We'll see you again soon.